Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check out another one of my videos. And if you're new around here, hello and welcome. My name is Katie Marie and the time has come to dive in to the worst product that I tried in 2020. I always find these very enjoyable to watch because it's always fun to see what products stand out to each person as just being oh so terrible that even if they tried at the beginning of the year, even if they tried it six months ago, they still remember the horrible experience they had while trying it. And so that's why I always like to do this at the end of the year along with my favorites. I also like to share the big fails from the year, the products that I just could not believe how bad they were. Now I do want to preface this by saying these aren't all the products that disappointed me because I feel like if I talked about products that I just didn't like or didn't, you know, disappointed me, we would be here forever because there's a lot of products that just don't make the cut that I just didn't like for one reason or another. So all of these products are, like I said, ones that stand out way above the other disappointments, way above the other ones that just don't work as just being terrible. And for one reason or another, it has scarred me, left an impression that I will not soon forget, and hence why it makes it into my worst of beauty for 2020. I am really excited to dive in. I have a pretty long list. I do want to also say if you like this eye look, I've already done it. I will leave it linked up here if you want to see the palette that I used and how I got this look because I do it live on camera, but I just added a black lip and we're ready to go to talk about the worst products that I tried in 2020. So let's just go ahead and jump right to it. All right, so I have moved over here because while I might have a couple still left in my collection, I mean, I, I know I do have a couple still left in my collection, but for the vast majority, I feel like I've already moved on from them, especially ones I tried at the beginning of the year. So just to save time for myself when recording this, I'm just going to be putting them on here while editing. Many apologies to editing Katie for all of the extra work you will have to do, but I hope you're not too tired when you're editing this. It helps me in the here and now, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. And the first one I'm gonna mention is the CoverGirl Pretty Fresh, Clean Fresh, I forget exactly, their Little Tinted Moisturizer. I think I have it over there, like I said, I'm just gonna be putting it up here on the screen because I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for myself. But this product, I could not believe how bad it was. I did a review, like a dedicated video, sharing all their like clean fresh or pretty fresh, I forget the line, but they came out with several products at the same time and I was on PR, I mean, I could still be on PR. I was on PR at the time and it was sent to me so I did a video on it and I really did not like that product. It didn't do anything and in fact it was one of those products that the putting it on made your skin look worse than if you didn't have anything on. And for me, that's just like, well, what's the point of this? Like, I don't want to put this on if it's going to make my skin look worse. So that was really something I didn't like. And then longevity wise, it just looks so bad throughout the day. It had no like hold to it. No matter what I tried to do applying it, no matter what I tried to like pair with concealer wise to see if I could get a little bit more concealer, you know, protect it where it would wear down the most. It just never looked good. And so that was a product that I did not like. I ended up getting rid of it. I tried to pass it on to my sisters because I was like, you know what, maybe it's just my skin type, my skin, something about my skin that doesn't like it. So I passed it on to them to try and use it and it didn't work for them either. They, after I gave it to me, they came back and were like, Katie, that product is like really bad. And so I was like, okay, it's not just me. So this is definitely a huge fail from the year. I mean, there was a lot of foundation fails for me from, you know, the year 2020, but this one stands out at the very top as just being oh so bad. Next up, I want to mention the Wet n Wild Mega Last Skinny Mascara. I believe that's what, what it's called. It's this one right here. This mascara I bought because I was wanting to find a drugstore alternative to a very tiny mascara one that I could use for my lower lashes. And I was had recommended this to me so I was like you know what that's a really tiny wand I'll try it and that way I can just use it for my lower lashes and I don't know if I got a dead mascara, but this tube felt dry the first time I opened it like I opened it the first time and I went to start applying it and I was like okay okay still nothing and still nothing and I like I kept going and going and finally I was like okay I'm starting to see the lash but there was no added definition there was no added clump there was barely any added length it was just like it was tinting it and I was just like what's the point of this did not like that at all um I tried holding on to it and at least using it up to get my money's worth out of it and use it up for you know three six months but I just never enjoyed using it because it was such a struggle to get the product to transfer onto my lashes and it wasn't the fault of the wand the mascara uh formula was just really really bad so that was a mascara that just from the the first initial one I was like oh this is pretty crappy okay this is not makeup but I do want to mention it because I did review it on my uh, channel and it is beauty related but these are the red aspen nail dashes oh my goodness these are <laughs> hands down the worst press on nails that I've ever tried like not to be mean and I know so many people who have watched my video of reviewing it have said like oh they work for me and I'm not you know I'm not a rep or whatever because it, it is an MLM if you're not aware red aspen is an MLM but uh I tried them and I still have some because I bought some of their more unique ones like I bought a really vibrant like neon orange because I thought that was so pretty and I even cut them down really short just so that it was the same length as my nail and they still pop off within a 
day or two like oh my goodness that I don't want to go through all that not struggle but all that effort to put them on and for them to pop off the next day and especially for them still being short like come on if they're that short I feel like you know my impress and my dashing diva if I keep them the same length as my nail as my nails they'll last so much longer than you know longer nails so I thought that by cutting them down to my my natural length that I would get at least a week's worth wear out of them but no they do not last and yeah because of that I just really don't like them I have tried so many you know nails this past year I think three new ones and then I have the two that I really like so I'm up to like five or six new nail brands that I really enjoy the nails that I get from them but red aspen is definitely that one brand that I was just like this is terrible and I never want to order from them again okay next up is Visily lashes do I even have it I think I have it down there somewhere but Visily, I believe is the brand these lashes they were supposed to be magic lashes and again I did a video on this product solely so I'll link it but uh I, they don't work like not to spoil the video for you but they do not work I tried so hard to get these to work and I can't remember how many times I tried go watch the video I kind of go into my struggles with trying to make them work but I can't remember if like I initially got them to work a little bit but I really don't think so but anyway the struggle was that I would put the stuff on I would do all the steps it would be a little bit tacky I would go to stick my uh, my lashes on and it would initially stick but if you go to like put the outer corner in you would go tap that down and then as you went to go do the inner corner the the back end would pop up so then I would go back and I do the back end and then the inner corner would pop up and every now and then I could get them both down but it would only last like five ten minutes maybe five ten minutes and then they would be popping up again I did not like them like even doing that video for them I did not want to put them back on my lashes I didn't want to go through the effort of doing that video because I was like oh this is just such a struggle I don't like these I don't like working with them they don't work but I did want to do that video just to be informative because when I was looking into the brand I did, couldn't really find much information besides like oh here's how you apply them look at these amazing lashes and it's like yes maybe you can get them on to look amazing for like five or two blinks but then on the sixth blink Length, you're like screwed because they pop off so yeah this product it was I mean maybe I was just totally in the wrong it could totally be my fault like user error but I tried so hard to make them work and I could not okay next I'm going to double up but they're both they're both from the same brand but these are the benefit dandelion twinkle and Georgia blushes these are two blushes that I tried from benefit this past year but I don't get these products because me I think I'm pretty pale like I don't think I'm that tan maybe I'm like a very pale medium I guess is typically what I go for in foundation and on my rather pale skin I could not get these blushes to show up and I'm someone who doesn't like blush so I feel like when it comes to more sheer type of blush that tends to be my vibe because I just don't like a lot of blush however these it wasn't that they were sheer or subtle or soft it's that they weren't there like I would go ham in the box to try to get some and then I would go ham on my cheek to try to see anything and it's like sometimes after after a long time of like really going back and forth it's like okay I think I see a hint of like pink or a hint of peach on there but that was all I did not get these product after trying them I reviewed them you know in my monthly series and then I passed them on to my sister to try because she's paler than I am she doesn't wear a lot of makeup she tends to you know not have anything on her face so she just wants a little something for blushing and I was like here try these I don't know if they'll work for you but you could have them because they don't work for me so yeah these two products I mean Maybe they're just intended for very fair people, but for me and my skin tone, I didn't get them because they, they wouldn't show up. So like, it's what's the point if you can't even see them? Okay, next product, I do have to mention these. I tried so hard to love these, but when I sat down, I'm like, okay, these were a fail, but were they a fail of the year or are they just, you know, eh, they don't work for me. These were a fail of the year, I think mostly because of my disappointment in them and how many I bought and how much money I spend on products that I don't want to use. And these are the JD Glow Liquid Gel Liners. I'll go ahead and show you, like, these are how many I have. They're not all JD Glow. I think these three are other brands, but the rest is JD Glow. I think they're like nine or ten dollars each. I bought all these and I never want to use them because they are a pain in the butt to put on and even when I do put them on nine times out of ten they look terrible. They look so uneven, so dry, so crackly and they're just like I said a pain to put on. So I have all of these sitting there that I don't want to get rid of because of how much money I spent on them but I don't want to use them because they're such a pain. So this is definitely a regret and mostly because I think my expectations were so high. I should have just bought one or two and tried the formula first, but I was just banking on the fact that I really enjoyed JD Glow and that they would put out a good formula, but no hate to JD Glow, you know, no, you know, no shade to them as a brand. They created the formula they wanted, obviously, and they know other people like it, so it may could just be me, but from my preference when it comes to doing liquid liner on my eyes, 
These were a huge fail on a formula that I hate working with and because I have so many sitting here now that I never use, it made it into the fails for me for 2020. Okay, so I tried a lot of adhesive liquid liners towards the end of the year. I did a video ranking five of the ones I tried from worst to best, and I'll leave that video linked up here, but spoiler alert, the one that came in fifth is earning its place as a worst of beauty for 2020, and it is the Quick Flick, what is that, La adhesive liner? The Quick Flicks glue liner. This product was bad because in all the times that I tried, and I had the most time with this product because it was the first product I initially bought, and so I had the longest time trying it, but in all the times I tried it, majority of the time I remember like plopping them on my lashes, trying to go for it. It looked like it was great. I went to finish up my makeup. I look up and the inner corner has popped off. So it was like, Ur! and I kept having to reapply. And like, if you don't mind reapplying many times, I think eventually after I kind of used it enough and kept reapplying it, it would stick for several hours. But still, it was never like stuck down for the day. It was just stuck down for an hour or two and then I would have to reapply with the little liner and I thought that was just like how like that that was the best it was going to get so I was like oh you know maybe this isn't so bad because it is really easy it is a lot easier to use that adhesive liquid liner to put down the lashes than like a traditional lash glue so I like that aspect of it but since going on and finding the best of the best that actually does last all day and that you don't have to reapply 50 million times I have now discovered that the quick flicks is a total fail so it's winning a spot in my worst of beauty for 2020. Okay, we are making our way down the list. Next is Chloe Bell, or no, Bell Chloe, sorry, switch those around. Magnetic Lashes. I don't remember exactly what month I wore these, but there was one month I wore them. I'll go ahead and stick up a screenshot here. Yeah, I was kind of scared editing myself because I was like, Katie, it looks like you have some kind of funky caterpillar on your lashes. And there was a one, at least one comment I got that uh, was like, oh my goodness, I'm so glad you said those lashes were a fail because the whole video I was looking at them going like, oh, Katie, those are, what the, 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 I couldn't agree more. Like they look terrible, but I wanted to wear them for the video because I was reviewing them. But that was the one time I actually wore them for longer than like a minute or two. And they were so uncomfortable throughout that video. I feel like if you watch that video, you can actually see me blinking more because they are so uncomfortable. Yeah, they look atrocious, they're uncomfortable, and I, I just don't recommend them. They're a huge fail. And once I did that video, I'm pretty sure I put them in my declutter pile that you'll see a video of soon because I never want to put those things back on my lashes again. No thank you. Also another fail, which I was kind of surprised to see this become a fail because I feel like I never really talked about what a huge fail it was on my channel because it wasn't until after I reviewed it that it became so sour. <laughs> but it, this is the Urban Decay Lash Freak Mascara. I reviewed it initially when I first got it and even in my initial review I was like, uh, it's just really wet, it's really clumpy, it's just there's too much product for the curve of the, of the mascara. It just is not able to take it off well enough for you to get a good application. It's got too much product on it because the wand itself I thought was very neat. I did enjoy the wand, but the formula was too wet and too much product was allowed on the wand for it to work well, which initially it's like a bit of annoyance. But as that formula thickens, once I hit like the one, two mark, it went downhill fast. And I think I ended up putting it in my trash pile after like month, maybe month two, maybe I made it to the two month mark because it got so gloopy. Anytime I pulled that out to use it, it was so thick and I would, you know, brush it through my lashes. It would just leave a sheet of mascara and not like nicely coating your lashes. No, just clumps, thick clumps on your lashes for you then to go, oh shoot, I have to brush this through before it hardens and completely ruins my lashes. So I did that a couple times, didn't enjoy how my lashes looked that day. And I was like, what am I doing? This is garbage. I put it in my garbage bin and I haven't regretted that decision ever since. So this product, while I, like I said, I really like the wand. I think it's very unique. They need something in it to better remove the product from it because as the product thickens, it becomes a nightmare and I hated it. Okay, next up is the Physician's Formula Sculpting Cream Bronzer. This product was so bad, oh my goodness. I bought this initially because I was like, I wanna try cream bronzer, I feel like I'll like it. I have cream blush, I have cream highlight, I wanna try cream bronzer. So I was like, let me get this, it's more affordable, I'll try it out. And I tried and I was like, this is why I hate cream bronzer, oh my goodness, it's terrible. But then, I followed that up with trying this from Milk Makeup and it's like, ah. Oh. This is what cream bronzers is supposed to be like. This is heavenly. You'll hear more about this later. But at the time, I just tried that one, and it is atrocious. It is the worst to blend out. You get a line wherever, like, you start and stop when you put it on your cheek. And then also within that, with it blending out, it blends out splotchy, no matter if you use a brush, a sponge, or whatever. So it blended out splotchy. It was hard to get the line from the start and stop point to completely remove. And it was just a train wreck. And it was also a really warm color, too. And all around, you can 
didn't watch my full review, but all around I hated it. I will use it a couple times enough to review it in that video. It's sitting in my drawer over there that I should just declutter it because I never want to use it again. It was atrocious. I also have to mention the e.l.f. eyeliner pencil. Do I even have it? Let me see real quick, just so I can swatch it for you guys. I've already decluttered it, but it was their khaki, I think it was like a greenish brownish, I forget what it was, but it was their eye pencil, and I used it initially, and I couldn't get anything to adhere to my waterline, and so I was like, huh, maybe it's just, you know, dry because it's brand new. I sharpened it down, I was like, it's just gotta break that seal and it'll be fine. I sharpened it down, and I went to put on my waterline, still wouldn't work. And maybe this is a biggest fail for me because I'm someone who always uses gel liners or like pencil liners in my waterline. Maybe if I used it on my upper lash line, it would work better. But even then, it was super dry, so I feel like it would really pull and tug. I don't do that on my on my upper lash line, so I can't attest to that. But for the waterline, it was the worst because no matter how hard I sat there and scrubbed, nothing, like not even a hint of product would come off onto my waterline. And I was just like, yeah, this is trash and it's brand new. Following that up, I also tried the Kat Von D, what's it called? It was the um, Lash Liner, I think, and Trooper. Oh, I might as well pull it out. I know I said I wasn't gonna pull it out, but this little guy right here, it's like a weapon. Um, I've always been intrigued ever since it launched. It was the, yeah, Lash Liner. This is supposed to be a liquid liner for your lash line, and it's supposed to be bulletproof and stay all day. And that intrigued me so much ever since it launched. I think it launched around the time when Kat Von D was unpopular, so I was too scared to try it. But now that she's, you know, sold her brand and it's KVD Vegan Beauty, I was like, Maybe I can try it now. It was on sale. I bought it. I was like, oh, this is gonna be awesome I'm gonna find something really really black that will stay in my waterline all day long I will leave where I reviewed it up here in the corner if you want to go watch it afterwards because I show you guys me putting it in my waterline The worst part of it is that it burns like not burns like it's on fire But it stings the moment you touch it to your lash line It stings and then if you don't like hold your lash line away from your eyeball and if you let go and your waterline touches your eyeball the black goes into your eye. Freaks me out. So it's stinging. It's making my eyes water. It's making black go all in my eyes. And I'm just like, where is that going? Is it gonna come out? Freaked me out. It was painful. It made my eyes water. It did all, you know, it went all over my eyeball. Three strikes, you're out. I have it and I don't ever want to use it because it hurt and it doesn't even stay. I almost forgot to point that out. It doesn't even stay. Even when I used it, I was like, okay, all this pain, it better like stay all night. It was gone like a regular gel liner. Okay, I also want to mention the Zoeva Multi-Use Face Powder. I reviewed this in a monthly favorite, I think, and I told you guys how, like, how much it didn't work, and I was like, please let me know, am I using this wrong? What is going on? Why won't it work for me? And no one really had anything, like, any advice to say, or no one said that they used it and loved it and, you know, gave me any advice, so I think it's just a dud product, because this product right here looks beautiful. When you swatch it, it looks beautiful, but the moment you go to put it on, it turns into glitter chunks that just spray all over your face all over your face and don't give you a nice shine. It's just like little chunks of glitter all over your face. And even though like I wet it one day and I tried to do, then it was just like a, like I look like the Tin Man of a streak. Like I couldn't blend it out. It was just like a streak. It ruined my makeup. Like I'm not someone to often, you'll go and redo my makeup. I just kind of, you know, make do, fix it as best I can and just call it a day. But that day I took my makeup off because it looked terrible as just like, it looked like I took a metallic shadow, wet it and then just went like, on my face and then walked away from my makeup table. I couldn't leave my makeup table like that. So yeah, I don't know how that product was intended to be used, but I tried to use that as a highlighter and it was a huge fail. And last up, I wanna mention the Ofra Absolute Cover Foundation. I feel kinda of bad putting this cause I feel like I've heard people enjoy it, but I tried to use this so many times. I tried it so many different ways and I just don't like it. I feel like this, if I had to describe this, it's like putting Nothing on, like no coverage on your face, but it tints my face orange, which could be tinting. Maybe it's just not my right color, but the coloring, the, like the weird coloring that I got besides, it doesn't give me any coverage and it just doesn't look that good. And then as the day progresses, it breaks down and looks terrible on your skin. So it's like, okay, I'm starting with no coverage on my face, but then as I go throughout the day, it looks even worse because the longer I wear it, it's starting to like crack up and, you know, just pill up around my face, on my jawline, very weird and cakey and I'm like how can you be cakey if you're not giving me any coverage like where do you come from it's like it disappears when you blend it in and then a couple of hours later it's like peekaboo I'm here now to look terrible it just confused me that foundation I tried to make it work I tried to you know use more use less use a brush use a sponge 
Anyway, I tried it, I didn't like it, and it's now sitting over in my drawer, and I'm like, oh, you could pull it out and try to use it again, and I'm like, no, I don't want to. It always looked terrible whenever I used it, and I never, never enjoyed it, so it earns its place as the worst in 2020. If you do love it, because like I said, I feel like people have said good things about it. If you do love it, let me know what kind of like primer you use. Let me know if you mix it with something. Maybe it's just a good mixing foundation. Let me know, because at this present moment, I never want to use it again, because I had such a bad experience. All right, so those are all my fail products from 2020. I feel like I got a little, I feel like I was shouting halfway through, but I feel like I got a little heated, but just know that I am mostly kind of poking fun at these products for not working for me. I'm not that upset or I'm not that broken up over them. And if any of these products do work for you, if they're holy grails for you, please don't take offense at me hating it and feel free to leave me your advice down below in the comments. And you know, you're free to just say like, hey, that's my favorite product and that's fine. We can agree to disagree. But if you want to give me tips, feel free to. And maybe if I have the product still in my collection, I'll give it a try to see if I can make it work. But yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And above all, I'd love to hear what your number one fail from 2020 was. I always love to hear what everyone's like standout product was like, oof, that was so, so bad. Share that with me down below in the comments. And yeah, that's gonna do it for my 2020 worst of beauty. We are gonna be talking about the best of beauty for 2020 tomorrow in tomorrow's video. So I cannot wait to share that with you guys. Be sure to come back tomorrow around the same time to see what products stood out because I have so many, so many awesome products that I cannot wait to share with you guys tomorrow. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to continue getting daily content from me, I'm over on Instagram. I'm LadyKitty92. And with all that said, I will see you very soon in tomorrow's video to talk about the best products that I tried from 2020. And I will see you very soon in that video. Bye guys. Bye.